This week I was supposed to be showing you the finished decorated box that I'd created in last week's 3D Thursday. However, I have actually spent the last three days either travelling to, travelling from, or being at Creating Craft HQ, demonstrating um, the Go Pressing Foil. So I haven't really had that much opportunity. What I've decided to do though is show you a quick video of how to create um, a box in which onto which you could weld something like the box top that I was creating. So it's not going to be exactly the same as this, but it will give you the principles of using Microsoft 3D Builder to create your own box uh, that you could actually pop something onto the top of and then 3D print with your Kaleido 3D printer. So I hope you enjoy the video this week and we'll get some use out of it. And I will be back next week with the finished result of the 3D printed decorative box. First things first, let's start a new scene. So we've now got our blank canvas on which we can place objects. Just so that you're aware, in case you're watching this at some point in the future, I am using version 14.1.1302.0. So if ever you come to this in the future and you're thinking, well, my menu might look different or something's changed, this is the version that I'm using for this particular video. Okay, so we need to start by getting a cube onto our workspace. So I'll just click on cube in the insert menu. That's positioned one here for me. Going into my scale um, box, and I can see currently it's set as 40 millimeters. That's around, that's under two inches. I'd actually like to increase it to around three inches. So with my ratio lock on, I'm going to type in here 75. So you click on this number here, this will open this box, type in the number you want and accept. Now because I had the ratio lock on, it's increased all of the measurements. So if I zoom out a little bit with my scroll wheel and reposition this, it's actually increased the height, the depth and the width of this cube to match the measurement that I put in for the width. So it's now 75 millimeter cube, which is, as I say, roughly three inches. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is duplicate this object. So I could go through the normal process of Control C and Control V for copy and paste, or I can use my object menu and click on duplicate. This now positions a copy of this next to the original shape or partly overlapping. So that it is back in the original position, I can either click on the number here and type in zero, or I can use the drag handle and drag it over until it snaps in place exactly where the other object is. Now before I deselect it, I want to change its colour as well, and this will become uh, relevant in a short while. So in Paint, click on Colour, choose the colour that I'm going to change it to, and then move my mouse over the actual object and click on it. Then confirm this by clicking on the tick, and there we have our second object recolored. Now, because they're both the same size, obviously at the moment we can't tell the difference between the two. So I'm going back down to scale and we're at 75 millimeters at the moment. Now I'm going to take off approximately two millimeters for each edge. So that would be four millimeters in total, taking this down to 71. So click on that number, open the box and then click accept. And that's now reduced the overall size of that inner, inner cube by four millimeters. What it hasn't done though is increase the height of it so it's still sitting on the actual um, base plane if you will. So I need to actually move that up a little bit. So I'm going back to my move cursor and I'm going to select the up and down arrow so you can see here by clicking on this arrow it's turned green, it's ready and activated. And I don't want to increase the height by four millimeters, I want to increase the height by only two, half of the um, overall change. So I am going to increase this number here to 37.5. So click on the number, type it in, and click accept. That's now moved it up. Now you might notice that the original object is currently um, almost see-through. And that's because in my view menu, I have the X-ray option selected. If I deselect that, you'll see that the original object is recolored and I can't actually interact with that inside shape. If you have this uh, arrangement like this, all you'll be able to select is the outside shape by clicking on it. However, 
If I go over to where it says items, and if it's not open, you can always open it with the drop down arrow. And I hover my mouse over the white box, which was the one we um, duplicated and changed color. I click on that and that now selects the inner shape. So I can now use the handles or the measurement boxes down here to make changes to it. I prefer the little x-ray thing though, because I can see then what's going on inside the overall shape. Right, now I need to subtract this shape from this shape. So with the inner shape selected, I am going to edit and then over to where it says subtract. That now has created a hollow shape, but I want to slice through it so that I can create a box opening. So we're going to go up to where it says split. And what this will do is now put a horizontal, let's say a line through this, but in three dimensions. And it's actually slicing through that object. What I don't want to do is lose the bottom though, so I'm going to go up here where, to where it says keep both and click on that. Now when I click on the confirm button, it will actually slice through both and leave me with two uh, shapes that have the 2mm wall and the empty space in between. So if I do that now, click, and then what I'll do is also turn off x-ray so that we're back to our beginning and I will recolor the lid into white, just as I did before. So now I can see I have my two shapes perfectly done and perfectly sliced. What I need to do now though is actually get this lid off here, turn it over and lay it flat onto my work plane. So whilst this is selected, I am going to move it using the left and right drag handle here, just leaving a little bit of space in between. And then I'm gonna use my rotate icon or cursor. And again, type in a measurement. And this one will be 180 degrees because I want to flip it around um, a particular number. However, I've made a mistake. I've got the actual, um, turning around, so it's actually sort of turning it this way as opposed to this way, if you see what I mean. So in order to change that, I just click on the arrow that has the relevant um, directional arrows. So I can either go this way or I can go this way or this way. But now with that one selected, I will go back and I will retype my measurement. Oh, it hasn't done it should have done it. <laughs> Maybe I should go back to 90 degrees. There we go. Oh, it's gone to 88 point. Let's undo that. <laughs> Let's try the other one. Let's try putting that back to zero. There we go. That's done it now. Okay, so back to the move icon. And again, I'm going to use drag handles. And this time I'm going to lower it until it locks into place with the floor. Now I have both the lid and the base in position where I want them to be. What I would like though is for there to be a lip inside here that will actually keep the lid in place when I position it on top. So if we, <coughs> excuse me, if we load up uh, another cube and what I'll do this time is unlock the ratio and drag the edges until they snap into place with the edge of that object. That should be 71 millimeters. Now, I've got to the point where I could just actually type these in and I will select the forwards and backwards and type 71 in here as well. And the reason I unlocked the ratio is because I didn't want it to be 71 millimeters tall. That would just create another lid almost. But I am going to drag this up just a little bit until I kind of get to where I want to be and then I'm going to click on here and round that number up to 45. Uh, now I'm going to repeat the process of duplication. For clarity though what I am going to do is recolor um, the inside part. I'll just randomly select yellow so that I make sure I know what I'm doing. And then we're going to object, duplicate, 
Again, recolouring this one just so that I can see what I'm doing. Makes no difference to the actual finished print because obviously you'll be printing in your filament colour of choice. Going to move, locking that into position with the inner shape. Then going to scale, turning back on the ratio rock, <laughs> the ratio lock. And this time I am going to make sure that my front and back or left and right is selected and take that from 71 down to 67. So that's another four millimeter reduction. Okay, that's done. And remember I need to turn on my X-ray so that I can see through these other objects and reposition this. And I need to go up two millimeters. So I'm going to move, select them up and down. I'm on 20.83 here, so I know I need to be 20, 2.83 and there we have our um, inner area almost that's going to come out but I want to make sure that it's punched all the way through the top so I am going to go back to my scale turn off the ratio lock select the up and down and just drag it to the definitely protrudes through the top then in edit I'm going to subtract that from the original shape. Now something odd has happened here in the fact that I have now got this weird overlapped area. I'm going to do something just to see if it will help and that is to select the outside shape that I want to weld to and merge these together. Okay so that worked and that's actually um, possibly just a display issue on the screen rather than a construction issue. Now, if I turn off uh, the X-ray view, we can see both the box base, the lip that's going to hold our lid in place, and the lid ready to print. And they're side by side. So this file can be exported as it is, and then sliced and printed on your Kaleido 3D printer. It's not exactly the way that I made the... Um, box lid that I showed you but it is the same tool so if you wanted to do a diagonal slice you would just use that split function and you can rotate the slicing plane to be at the angle you wanted it to be. Did you manage to follow that? Fairly straightforward isn't it? Okay so listen if you've got any questions obviously you can leave them below the video on YouTube or in the comment section on the blog gentlemancrafter.com in the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you again next week. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.